Ooh, that was intimidating. They've got louder every time. I don't think the clacker will make it through <laughs> take five. Canvas. Oh, canvas with, with, with them pixels. With them pixels. Um, of course, canvas has been around a while. Yeah, it's been. And it's, I think it's actually still pretty underused because sometimes mm. when you have like effect, people like bend over backwards to implement it with DOM elements. Yes, me. That's me. I do that. Um, it's, it's just simple because then I can use. It's not though. Transitions. Like if and I think animations. There's CSS. like some spinners. If I look at the spinner that you put in Squoosh. I, yeah, but I got something. That's, that, well, could, that could be canvas. Yeah. Okay. That would and it would be interesting to compare the performance actually for that. Yeah. Um, and on the, the spinners I did on the HTTP two or three app. Thing. The are, radial progress bar thingies. Yes, they're they're uh, SVG. They're not canvas. They're not canvas. So why are you talking about them? Well, I was just saying it was easier to do it in SVG. I can understand why people don't use canvas. That's okay. The end, that's the end of this <laughs> segment. To, 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 to be fair, like uh, round things in canvas, I find frustrating because you only have where arcs and, and never. Where's the circle command? And arcs parameters are so unintuitive. It's yes. Yeah. Yes. It's irritating, but. What I want to talk about is the newer Canvas stuff that's arriving. There's so new Canvas stuff? Newer Canvas stuff. So what's in Chrome now, and I think other browsers as well, I think it's it's definitely in Firefox, uh, is off-screen Canvas. Yes, off-screen Canvas. I mean, that's it's the same Canvas. It's the same Canvas. Same, same API. You get the same drawy bits. Yep. But actually, well, you go. What, what, what is new about it, Jake? I don't know. Tell me, please. Well, it's the same Canvas. It's got the same drawy bits, <laughs> but it's off-screen. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's in a worker. And that's, ah, the, so that's yeah. the nice bit. Um, you can construct it in a worker and use yeah. it to generate graphics and then send them over to the main thread, right? You send them over to the main thread. And so it's that you can do all your complicated work in a worker and then just send or you know, transfer the pixels across. Does it also do time. WebGL? So this is this is the thing about the browser support is we support 2D in WebGL. Uh, I believe Firefox only supports WebGL. Only WebGL? Yeah. Interesting. It's, it's part of their like you know thing to do games was their yeah. main focus. So it was WebGL. Um, I'm interested in it from doing things like image decoding off the main thread, which you should be able to do just oh, normal Why would you be anyway. interested in that? I have no idea. I have no idea at all. I mean, to be fair, there is um, image decoding. Actually, there is image.decode now, which decodes an image off thread, yes, which is good. It doesn't give you the pixels. No, sure. But I'm saying, like, yeah. for, for because there were, I think Paul Lewis a long while ago wrote a blog post where he actually decoded images in a worker with Canvas to basically not block the main thread with a decoding, which used to be a thing, that decoding yes. blocked the main thread. Now browsers just decode in a different thread under the hood. Yeah. But the second you want to get to the pixels or do some manipulation or maybe scale it um, to store less on disk or something, yeah. um, that becomes really handy. You're doing all the canvas work that's main thread based. Um, so yeah, yeah, do, do it all in the worker and then just send the done image. So do you have to like? Um, Create an off-screen canvas and then write piping to bring it on screen once it's done and send over image data. Or uh, you can transfer the canvas from the main thread to the worker and then just sort of operate on it in the worker. Oh, that's just magically. Does, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So, so that could be good for that will be good for games where you have like the game yeah. logic probably running in a worker and you say like you draw on a canvas and it gets synced to the main thread. So you get request an animation frame now in a worker. That's interesting. Which is one of the things that you would need for that. True. Um, yeah, you is, would need that. Which is pretty cool. I'm not sure how that works if you've got two monitors of different. Refresh rates, it maybe figures. I guess it figures it out because it knows where the canvas is. I mean, yeah, Chrome already figures out the resolution as well. Like, you literally can yeah. move from high DPI to low DPI, screen. it just yeah. works. Exactly. But the, the, the problem is, it's a tab that knows that. Whereas if you're in a worker, you're not in the tab. So but it's associated with the, It is strongly associated with, with, a tab. with the renderer, so it should, it should work, I think. Yes. Um, so that's, that's the thing. I'm, I, it, I think it'll be useful even. I think it's a big like, puzzle piece, honestly. Well, and there's other cases it unlocks, not just a performance case. It'd be things like um, if you get a push notification mm. uh, in a service worker and you have like avatars cached, yeah. but you're, it, it's a group message, mm. you could construct a, an icon. True. Dot, 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 made up of those. Yeah, or like badging. Like, like there's five new messages now, so you're going to can, can change the. Exactly. Yeah, and you could do that, and without having to go to the yeah, server. Yeah, that's actually and, super and, useful. And download that. So yeah, so that, that's one bit, and we've got and, we'll and post you, an article I guess on that. you can also do like video transcoding potentially in a worker, maybe. Um, I mean, oh, if you had uh, all the streaming stuff and everything. Maybe. But, I mean, Canvas technically is able to play videos in a way, right? You can take a video element and just decode everything. Yes, on but the we don't have a video element in a worker. And that's, so that that's the missing piece. That media, a lot of the media APIs are missing from workers right now. It's something they're looking at getting. Uh, and I think especially as 
you know, we'll start to do more media stuff that isn't real time based. Yeah. I think that's when it makes sense to start having that in a worker. Yeah, that's going to um, be really cool. Because uh, right, right now, a lot of the media streams are based around sort of uh, WebRTC. So like it's all based on you know dropping frames if it's not real time and that sort yeah. of thing. Whereas like video processing, yeah, you'd want that uh, in a worker. We have it with audio worklet where you can like do an uh, audio web audio API, not audio worklet specifically, but web audio API where you can do an offline context offline to just context, generate yeah. audio. It would be cool to have the same thing for video because exactly. if you could like generate videos, like do a, like mini video editor, it would be so yeah. cool to build on the web. And you say there's, there's encoders in the browser already for web you see, so yeah. why can't we access them for, for other stuff? That's cool. Uh, another Canvas thing. Uh, oh, that's another one. Yeah, this one is super experimental, only in uh, Chrome behind flag sort of stuff. Um, that's sort of experimental. Woo. It is they're looking at low latency Canvas. Huh. And this is an option you would pass uh, in, into the Canvas when you're, uh, I think it's when you're getting the context, mm -hmm. get the 2D context. Um, what, what, like, what makes it low latency? It Okay, so in terms of web standards, mm -hmm. what it does is it it sits outside the event loop. So mm. right now, we can only paint at that particular point yeah. in an event loop, and if something else is blocking, yeah, you actually batch up the the draw instructions, and yeah. then I guess we partly they even execute on the GPU, but whatever. Like we just execute yep. a batch of draw calls, and then yes, and so it means that if you like something has changed on the page, like yeah. the the the. DOM painting is going to be synchronized with the canvas painting, which okay. is what you want in a lot of cases. Yeah. But it also can delay things going onto the canvas. And I yes, it's batching up all of these calls. Sometimes it's batching up the whole um, image, right? It's a, a yeah. double buffering, right? Is that the double you, buffering? Yeah. You know these terms better than I do. Um, I mean, that's it's, that's pretty much a gaming practice because when the GPU renders, like at first it draws, you know, the, the background, then the couple of polygons at the back, and so if you don't do bubble buffering, bubble, and you, bubble buffering, uh, bubble buffering, <laughs> double buffering, <laughs> and your GPU is forced to ship a frame because frame rate, uh, yep. you might have an incomplete picture, and then you get like this weird thing where you have tearing or you have like yep. things building up over a frame, even though you don't want that. So that's you have a buffer where they already build images in, and you build up the next frame in a separate buffer, and then you so, swap them. So this is the first one, ah. the one with the tearing. So it, you you end up with just one set of bytes representing the image content of that canvas. Oh, cool. And so if, you're, um, you know, if you weren't using request animation frame properly, or you've got half of your thing drawn, mm. you will end up with half of the thing on the page there. Um, oh, so that's, well, I mean, that first, it sounds like that's a step backwards. But in the other, on the other hand, it puts you in control, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, so it's useful for things like a drawing app, where mm. you're, you're taking stylus input and drawing it straight away. There's no tearing issue there. Yeah, and you really want as low latency as possible to make yeah. it feel as natural as you possibly can, right? Exactly. And I guess and also like in, in the day and age of where WASM is a thing, um, if you compile an existing C++ drawing library, it already has double buffering in there. Exactly. So you end up with double, double buffering. Double, double buffering. Double, double buffering. Quadruple buffering. Quadruple buffering. Oh. And, okay. and so this is a way of opting out of that, and then you just keep the, the buffering that, that your game engine has. Oh, that's so, really cool. Uh, so yeah. And that is pretty much all I know about it right now. <laughs> like I said, it's, it's one of those things so that I sort know of flew past. I looked at a demo, and we'll post the links to it. And I was I like, I ever oh. wrote an article about the off-screen canvas, which yes, we're going to link to. Yep. And we'll link to the demo of the um, the, the canvas, the low latency canvas. Who wrote which, that? Um, I don't know. Is it Ken Lang? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's just, he's just excited about it, isn't he? Yeah, he's just excited about it. It was done by the engineer who did the implementation. Oh, that's uh, good. Junov, I think. Oh, OK. Um, I don't know their full name. But it's. Uh, it, it works. Uh, it crashed Chrome a couple of times for me, so <laughs> that's how experimental we're talking. But really? it's really exciting, and it, I, because it's just a simple drawing app. I would love a side-by-side -side example, because I can't decide if it's like placebo effects that it feels faster. Because you know, I'm told this is low latency. Camera's like, Woo -hoo -hoo. look how low latency is that. That line really appeared on screen faster than I've ever seen it appear before. So I, you know, I, it's very obviously very important for game engines and that kind of low latency. Yeah. I would like to see some science behind how much faster it is on like a, a phone, especially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's yeah, gonna be interesting. interesting. Sometimes it takes over my like one armpit just goes. That was that was me um, before I/O, not last year or the year before, because I, I I picked a t-shirt that I wanted to wear. It was an F1 t-shirt. I was like, yeah, I'm wearing my F1 t-shirt. <laughs> and then just before going on stage, pretty much, uh, I just looked around and said, just yeah, just this armpit, this one, drives a bone. This one.